a day late Twenty-four little hours Brought the sun and the flowers Hi, I'm Troy Miller. I'd love to share some thoughts with you about musical creativity. Whenever you make an album, as a producer or as a writer, you're looking for something unique, first of all, but also something that's familiar. So that's always a challenge, making new music. And uh, it was no different working with China Moses, who brought me fully-fledged songs that she'd written and some of them co-written by uh, another friend of mine, Ollie Rockberger, who's an amazing songwriter too. And they brought me these fully fledged songs. And really, it's often just about bringing them alive and bringing them alive in a unique way, in a way that suits the artist um, and reflects their character reflects the message, more importantly. So really, that's at the forefront of my mind um, in any music-making situation, but particularly with China, because a lot of these songs um, have real meanings for her, and, and, and some of them delve into some darker areas, you know, of, of thought, um, and so it was, it was quite interesting bringing those ideas and messages to, to light. Um, and it's always exciting for me, the genesis of a project. Um, and I loved working with China. This is my first time working with her, even though we recorded the album, well, nearly three years ago <laughs> uh, in New York, Brooklyn and some of it in London. Um, and now this is really the first live offering with orchestra, so it's super exciting for us. Yeah, there's, there's really um, three strands to being a producer, a really great music producer, in my opinion. Um, the first is really understanding the artist and understanding the person um, behind the artist and understanding the message um, behind the song. Um, and those things are usually linked. So I think this takes a bit of thought sometimes as a music producer and sometimes your role um, can extend to almost being like a, a therapist <laughs> in a way. and. You know, it's cathartic um, for us too, as producers, um, because we're helping somebody give birth to, to music. Um, so it's like a, a the musical equivalent of being a midwife or something, you know. Um, that's how I view it. <laughs> so that's the first thing. Second thing is obviously there's a functionality to being a producer. You're recording the music, and that often in, involves playing instruments. Um, I'm very thankful that I've had so much experience playing different instruments, piano and drums, and, and um, I think that's a key part, is, is really understanding the role of the instrument in the context of the music you're recording, and then also the musical arrangement, um, which is tied to the playing and who you might put in the room, whether it's uh, a recording experience that's just 
a few people or many people, you know, affects the sound and the arrangement. And so th there's a functionality to it. Um, also, there is the element of um, pursuing the message and realizing the message. And I suppose the older I get, the more concerned with that I become because music always carries a weight of a message. You know, what is it you're trying to communicate? What is it you're trying to say? Um, and in what context? And so there's this push-pull sometimes. These things affect one another. Um, but I think understanding the message and understanding the artist and, and what they need, and in a way their, their uniqueness, um, helps you with the musical arrangement and the recording. It really serves to inform all the functional things. Um, so that's, in my mind, that's what makes a good producer. I think also being persistent with ideas because it's important to have a vision. And sometimes you make decisions along the way that fall outside of the vision because you're trying to be unique or you're trying to do something special or new. Um, especially if you're thinking outside of formulas. And it's important always to remember the vision. And it sometimes involves scrapping something or putting something to one side because it didn't work along the way. But the ultimate vision has to be fulfilled. And um, so it requires patience. <laughs> you know, uh, it also requires organization because you know, often, especially if you're working with a label, there's a deadline involved. Uh, there's always a lead time leading up to a release of, of music. So you have to be very practical thinking. And as I say, if you're in line with the vision, it's easier to make decisions here and there um, and quick decisions and being decisive and just going for it, just being brave um, and not being afraid to fail. Um, all the things you would say about life, really, <laughs> is, is true of making music, if you're doing it with integrity. One of the most important things as a young musician or as a young producer is always to be open to learning and make it known to other people that you want to learn because the learning never stops ultimately <laughs> you know i'm still learning i hope to, i will still be learning if i live to 70 80 by god's grace i'll still be learning you know um because it's with that attitude that things happen and relationships happen too, you know, uh, musical relationships. Um, I think the moment you become too confident in yourself and your knowledge and what you already know, that's when it can close the doors to creativity and to relationships with, with other musical people. Um, so I try to keep alive in my musical thoughts and in my listening and in my learning. And it can, the learning never stops, but it, you can learn from anybody too. You can learn from somebody who's way younger than you, you know, who has new experiences, interesting ideas, Equally, you learn from people that are much older than you, that have, have a lifetime of experience. I've always loved um, surrounding myself with people who have been doing it a lot longer than I have, you know, for decades, um, for half a century maybe.
50 years, somebody who's been doing music, what's their experience? What can I learn from it? Um, I mean, I was blessed to spend a whole summer with Diana Ross um, because I produced her last album. But just the wealth of experience and knowledge, just being in the same room as her really, um, is significant. Um, so I think it's good to go out of your way to spend time with people who, who have knowledge and experience and be open to learning. Um, that's number one. I think there's always an le element of thinking outside of yourself, you know, so and I think it's quite a deliberate thing that you have to get outside of your own head because as humans we can follow patterns of behaviour and, you know, if you're not careful, what you do can become functional and formulaic and it's not that formulas are bad, but they can sometimes cramp or stilt creativity. So it's good to kind of think outside of the box. And again, it relates to spending time with, with others um, and being open to learning. But it's also, I think, a choice in your own mind um, to explore. And uh, I think this is so important too. I feel most creative when I see eye to eye with somebody, with somebody else in the room. Um, especially if it's a collaboration, you have to see eye to eye. You have to be sort of on a on an equal path if you if you like and you have to find common ground but when you do find common ground it's very freeing you know because you have somebody who agrees with you and you agree with them you know uh, and there's something powerful in that and a freedom and you have freedom to then explore creativity in a musical way um, I think a lot of creatives probably find that they have to, you know, in order to get outside of their their mind, they might use um, unhealthy ways of doing that. But I think there's a healthy way of doing it, which is through relationships. And ultimately, I mean, I'm a Christian, so I look to God for creativity because I think he's the source. I think the original purpose of music is music was made for worship. So we're worshiping something when we play music. If it's not God, it's something else. It's sex or it's people or it's yourself or maybe material things or human ideas. Um, but it's always a kind of act of worship. Um, and so I get a creative urge um, when I pray and when I meditate. And again, this is linked to um, the message. I think if you're proclaiming a truth or you're saying something that's honest, say for instance, and it could be anything, you're honest about your own life, mistakes or failures or, or even the joyous parts of life, that you're being honest with it and you're connecting with that. So I think there's a creativity that comes from being honest. Um, yeah, but, but and, and sometimes creativity comes when you're in isolation and when you're on your own, because um, me, myself, I'm naturally an introvert. So I kind of recharge when I'm on my own. When, I, when I'm on my own, 
I find creativity in the silence and in the quiet moments, um, away from distractions, you know, away from your phone, for instance, um, away from social media, because that way you feel a freedom, you don't feel constrained by other ideas or distractions or philosophies or, you know, things that have nothing to do with the music or the creativity, you know, it could be um, money, for instance, that's a, a distraction. And, it, and it's a difficult thing to balance because as musicians and producers, we're paid to do what we do. This is how we make our living. I make a living from it, you know. Um, uh, but it's, and it's a temptation sometimes to be guided by that, you know. But I think ultimately the best creativity comes from a pure place and a, and a naive place in a way. Because I often hear artists say, and I can relate to this, that, oh, I felt so creative when I wrote my first music or my first song, you know, or when I was a child. I mean, my personal memories, I used to handwrite scores when I was a teenager. And because computers weren't doing it when I was a, a kid. And there was, I found an enormous freedom in that and also a freedom because there was lots I didn't know about music and so there was a naivety there there was a freedom there uh, for creativity kind of like a, a, a child would be playing a game sometimes children have a vivid ma imagination because it's not corrupted or influenced by worldly things so yeah, trying to get back to that kind of place, childlike state is, is a good place to be with creativity. China Moses is really unique, you know. She has a unique pedigree, if you like. Um, a musical pedigree, her, her mother, it's DG Bridgewater, as you well know. Um, but the things that rub off on you, you know, when your family is in that environment uh, is amazing. And the thing I love about China is, first of all, her sense of freedom and her sense of uh, being so comfortable in her own skin uh, and that's not an easy thing to achieve it's not something you necessarily taught but that's something she has it's kind of innate um, and she's very giving with it you know um, I was telling her earlier today that she has this sort of um, way about her that, that, that makes you feel you can be open to her, you can open up. Um, and that comes out in the music, I think. Um, you know, she spent so much time in Brooklyn, New York, so much time in Paris, you know, uh, being French speaking also, so much time in London. So she has an eclectic music taste and that makes things exciting you know in the studio when you know that somebody's is so open you know they they have a an understanding of jazz they have an understanding of r&b of of church music um a love of the orchestra you throw all these things into the pot you know uh it's going to spark creativity and 
So I really love that about China. Um, she has a knack in her songwriting of getting to the heart of a matter. Uh, I'd like to call it pithy, you know, like it has substance to it. And even the dark things she's able to talk about and make it relatable. Um, and she's very brave actually tackling um, some dark issues. It's, it's, it's not something that everybody's willing to take on, but she is so incredibly musically brave, I would say she is, yeah.